What does British tableware have to do with the opium wars in China? The pattern on this plate is known as Blue Willow and it has quite a complicated history. Starting in the late 1700s, European, particularly British artists, started to imitate Chinese motifs and techniques in a movement dubbed Chinoiserie. The core motifs of the willow pattern include a willow tree, three men on a bridge, a small boat, a pagoda, a fence, and two doves flying in the sky. Marketed as authentically Chinese, this scene, and later its accompanying legend, shaped Western consumers' view of a China they never really knew, and it also may have helped drive the disastrous opium wars. This is the story of the Blue Willow Pattern. A beautiful courtesan named Kung Sa lived in her father's palace by the water, and you can see this on the plate. Kung Sa fell in love with Chang, her father's bookkeeper. Her father didn't like this at all, and in response, he built a huge wall, which you can see built around his palace right here. This did not put a stop to Kung Sa's interest in Chang. So, her father decided to marry her to a wealthy jewellery dealer by the name of Ta Jin. On the night of their arranged marriage, Ta Jin arrived in a boat, which you can see on the plate. And of course, everybody got really drunk in celebration. Kung Sa took advantage of this and fled to Chang's quarters with Ta Jin's jewels in tow. Her father sent three men in chase. Chang and Kung Sa managed to escape to a distant hideout. They lived happily off the stolen jewels, and Chang eventually became a renowned writer. But this was their downfall. Kung Sa's father found out and sent assassins for Chang. Chang was killed, and Kung Sa, in her despair, committed suicide shortly thereafter. But there is a happy ending. The gods, so enamored and impressed by Chang and Kung Sa's pure love, reincarnated them as two doves. Chang and Kung Sa live together for eternity. And that is the story of the Blue Willow Pattern. At this point, you may be wondering, how did this plate become so popular? During the 17th century, millions of pieces of Chinese porcelain were imported to Northern Europe via the East Indian Trading Company along the trading route shown here. These imports incited an interest in China by Europeans as an exotic and unknown place. As a result of their popularity, traditional British local wares began to suffer. But where exactly did this blue willow pattern come from? Everything about this story and pattern was actually fabricated in England. Seems this story came together piecemeal by incorporating narrative features to the Shinasare visuals of the plate. And the visual elements seem to have been first incorporated by either Thomas Turner of the Cockley Porcelain Factory in Coalport, Shropshire, or by his apprentice, Thomas Minton. There are also suggestions that the plate in its final form may have been first produced by the Spode factory in Stoke under the guidance of Thomas Minton. English factories such as Spode and the Johnson brothers began replicating this pattern and hence the notorious motifs of the willow pattern were born. The addition of the legend of the lovers accompanied the aesthetic elements as a clever marketing ploy. This is where it gets interesting. The willow pattern became widely successful in England. The Chinese noticed this and copied the pattern for export to Europe. This of course only propagated the notion that the willow pattern was traditionally and authentically Chinese in origin. From this point onwards, buying of Chinese goods only increased to meet raising demand. Boats travelled to London full of goods, but there was not a reciprocated demand for English goods. That's when the British came up with a solution. Opium. The willow pattern remains popular even today. The following are a handful of the English manufacturers who capitalised on its success. Johnson Brothers, Churchill, Booths, Royal Dalton, Wedgwood, Woods and Sons, Royal Wessex, Bode, Cuthbertson, Staffordshire, Burgess and Lay, Adams China, Sadler's China, Hallerts and China, Royal Albert. This long list does not even include the Chinese, Japanese or American manufacturers. 
But to me, the real take home here is that the concept behind cultural exchange is to promote mutual understanding between two cultures and to strengthen their relationship. Adversely, cultural misappropriation is usually one-sided. Members of one culture steal elements of another culture to benefit themselves in some way, reinforcing existing systems of power. Is the Blue Willow pattern an example of British misappropriation of Chinese culture? Share your thoughts below and let's have a discussion. Thank you for watching. We plan to bring you weekly videos about historical and contemporary culture and how it impacts our lives. If you would like to subscribe, please click here. Thank you.